Let's talk about the upper third of the face in particular, uh, in particular the brow and the upper eyelids. So what happens as we get older, the brow begins to drop down. It gives this illusion of being tired. Patients will come in a lot and talk, get all this extra skin, doc. Can you trim off the extra skin? Once you look at them, you realize it's not as much of an upper lid issue. It's the brow drops down. Think about the analogy of a curtain rod on a window. If you take the curtain rod and you lower it halfway down the window, the drapes begin to puddle at the bottom of the window. So do we want to trim the drapes or we're going to raise the curtain rod back to the top of the window? So in the vast majority of women, especially, we want to raise the curtain rod back to the top window first before we do anything to the upper lids. In essence, do a brow lift before we do anything to the upper lids, uh, giving them that nice, pretty arch back of the brow, uh, which is a much more youthful, rested look. Now, it used to be that surgeons make these big incisions across the top of the head. Now we can do brow lifts endoscopically, so it's four little tiny incisions, two on each side, very gently raising the brow back up, um, which gives, a, a, especially a woman, a much more rested look. Now, men are a little bit different because in men, we tend to look a little more distinguished if our brow is low. So we do more upper lid surgery or what we call upper blepharoplasty than men um, because it, the men can tolerate the brow being lower much better than women. In women, we use the brow lift. Only then after the brow is set back in place do we consider ever doing an upper lid surgery for them.